Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics in our beautiful First Star Logistics studios, as always. Time for keys to the game against the Denver Broncos. One of the biggest keys in my mind is play with a lead. In the last two losses the Bengals have had, home losses for eight quarters, they never had a lead in the football game. The first lead they took was in overtime last week against the 49ers can't do that to yourself play with a lead it is a much different football game offensively defensively all the play calling it's a totally different game when you're playing with a lead in in fact the Denver Broncos three times this year in the, three of their losses after two series they've been down 10 nothing and that's tough that's tough when you're down 10 nothing right away down two scores in the NFL right away dig a hole like that that's tough and we've seen the Bengals get down 24 nothing in a football game down two scores in the fourth quarter. Those kind of things are tough. Play with the lead on the road in particular for as long as you possibly can. How about a complete game, a complimentary football game, offense, defense, and special teams? Really haven't had that happen this year yet. It really hasn't. There have been signs of it, and different phases have stepped up in different weeks. And in a couple of games, a couple of victories, when they pulled away in the second half, that was the case where it was totally complimentary football. But obviously, the big thing last week was special teams with two muff punts, two fumbles, took a possession away from the offense, made the defense go right back out on the football field and, def and defend a short field because of all the field position they gave away during the punt and then fumbling the punt. So it was a double, th those were double whammy turnovers, and you have to play a complete football game. That's going to be a, a big key, I think, in this football game as well in all three phases. And then finish. The Bengals have put themselves in position in the fourth quarter at times to finish. Got to learn to finish these close football games. And I'm not just talking about finishing the game. I'm talking about finishing every snap, finishing every series with, with some authority, finishing every quarter, finishing every half, and then finish the football game. You know, it's 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 going to be one of those uh, one of those kind of games out there in Denver. The Denver Broncos have outscored the opponent by 40 points in the fourth quarter. They are finishing. This is a football team. They have their most points scored. They've scored 98 points in the fourth quarter. So they turn it on. You know, Teddy Bridgewater and, and the offense puts it together and turns it on in the fourth quarter more than they scored in any other quarter. The Bengals uh, have scored 116 points in the fourth quarter. That's their biggest scoring quarter. Problem is, they've given up 102. That's the most they've given up in any quarter. So uh, that's that's amongst the league leaders in both categories. So they're only plus 14. Denver's plus 40 in that fourth quarter. It's going to be big, big. Finishing is going to be massive. Turnovers. We talk about it every week, but it's the most important stat in the National Football League. You win the turnover battle 65, 70% of the time, no matter how much, how many turnovers you win the battle by, you're going to win it. 65% all the way to 99%, depending on if you're plus one up to plus five. In the seven wins for the Cincinnati Bengals, they've only given the football away five times, less than one turnover per game. In the six losses, they've now given the football up 16 times. I mean, closing in on three a game. You have two turnovers in an NFL game, you're putting yourself in jeopardy. If you have three turnovers, you're, you're dead meat. It's, it's incredible. You can't give the football up with that kind of regularity and expect to win football games. When the Bengals have had multiple giveaways, two or more, they're 0-5 this year. When the Bengals have had one turnover or less, they're 7-1. and one. Ball security. Hold on to the football. Take the football away. Win the turnover margin. That's going to be real, real big. The Denver Broncos, by the way, are really good in terms of ball security. I want to make sure I get this right. They've only lost nine, or they've only put the ball on the ground in seven games. They've only put it on the ground uh, nine times. I should say in 13 games, they've only put the ball on the ground nine times. That's second fewest in the National Football League. They've only lost six of them. That's tied for eighth fewest in the National Football League. They've only thrown nine interceptions. That's tied for ninth fewest in the National Football League. They've only had, if you do the math, that's 15 giveaways, 15 giveaways in 13 football games. That's tied for seventh fewest in the NFL. They're in the top 10 
in every single category in terms of ball security, in terms of not giving the opponent extra possessions. That is going to be big on the road in this football game. There's no doubt about it. From a matchup standpoint, the biggest matchup that I'm looking to watch, I'm looking to see the Denver Broncos secondary might be the best the Cincinnati Bengals have played all year. They've got a couple of players that are just outstanding. Patrick Sertan, the second, a rookie cornerback. He's got four interceptions already on the season. That's uh, That that leads, leads all rookies. At safety, Justin Simmons, a 60-year player, has five interceptions. That's tied for third most in the National Football League at the free safety position. He's also knocked down. 13 other uh, other passes. He's two away from his career high of 15 passes broken up. He's knocked down uh, 12 passes, I should say, in 13 football games. He's tied for third most in the NFL with five interceptions. Sertan is tied for eighth most in the NFL with four interceptions. They're the only tandem in the National Football League, the only duo, a dynamic duo, that have combined for nine interceptions. Going against the trio of wide receivers for the Cincinnati Bengals. This group is the only group of wideouts that have at least 55 catches or more, all three of them. Uh, Boyd's got 55, Higgins has 57, Chase has 60. Any other team in the league that has three uh, receivers with 55 or more catches on the same team, they're not all wideouts. They're tight ends, they're running backs and wideouts. So the, the trio, the triplets of the Cincinnati Bengals, Chase. Higgins, Boyd, how will they stack up against Sertan and Simmons? That's going to be a very huge matchup in this football game because the Denver Broncos are really, really good on the back end. And their head coach, Vic Fangio, he's a defensive coach. He's That that was his background, his, his defense. He wants to run the football, and then he wants to control the clock and uh, and, and then play Really sound defense, limit mistakes, capitalize on the opponent's mistakes. That's his formula for success. And the running game, we'll talk about a little bit. Uh, they've got two running backs. They have a duo at the running back position as well. And the running back position, Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams. These two guys have combined for over 1,400 yards, 1,459 yards, 700-plus yards apiece. They're both tracking for 1,000 yards rushing. And they've rushed for uh, 10 touchdowns, and they have 15 touchdowns rushing and receiving. They are a real force at the running back position. The Bengals are fourth in the National Football League in stopping the run. They're only allowing 93 yards a game, and they're only allowing 4.1 a carry. Denver uh, is is 100, over 130 yards a game, 134 yards a game, 40 yards a game more than the Bengals allow. And they're averaging like 4.5 yards. Uh, per carry. So it's 4.6. They're going to, that's going to be a big matchup. And the key is tackling, sure tackling. Javante Williams, the second round pick out of North Carolina, this this rookie running back, 5'10, 220. Good body lean. It's like trying to tackle a pectoral on a quadricep. He gives you no hitting surface. And boy, people have bounced off of him. He's made the first tackler miss so many times. So you're going to have to get your entire body in front of him, hit him with your shoulder, get your head in front, wrap him up, take him to the ground. And don't leave a teammate out there one-on-one. -on -one. Don't isolate a teammate saying, okay, you go make the play. Run to the ball. A bunch of guys, gang tackle. Going to have to hustle. Going to have to run run all over the football field. Melvin Gordon is a, is a complete back. He's about 220 pounds as well. Good runner of the football. Outstanding route runner, receiver. This Denver Bronco football team, is, is, is a good team. I mean, it's, it's got the same record as the Cincinnati Bengals. And in their, um, in their wins, uh, the Denver Broncos, by the way, are second, allowing the second fewest points in the National Football League. So it's going to be a challenge for the Bengals offense. They're allowing 17.8 points a game, which is second best in the league. In their wins, though, they've only allowed 75 points in their seven wins. 10.7 yards per game, uh, 10.7 points per Per game. That's unbelievable in the National Football League to hold an opponent to 10.7 points per game on an average basis for seven games in winning those games. They play very sound defense. They've got a lot of really good players. They don't have necessarily superstars. They traded Von Miller 
it, this this is the most impressive thing about the the Denver Broncos season, in my opinion. They lost four in a row. They trade Von Miller. They're three and two since. And in, in the in the in the five games that since they traded Von Miller, when they run the ball thirty times or more, they've won all of them. When they throw the ball thirty times or more, they've lost two. What do you think they're going to try to do? They're going to try to pound the rock. There's no doubt about it. That's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to set up the play action passing game with a sound running game, and that's that's been their formula for success. And they've they've done a pretty darn good job of it. And finally, the all-important special teams, catch the ball. <laughs> That's going to be the mantra when the punt is in the air. And in the Mile High Stadium, it is 5,280 feet above sea level. That's one thing that the Denver Broncos do. They put a big sign right outside the visiting locker room. You are 5,280 feet above sea level. They want to remind you that it's rarefied air. The Bengals are going to have to make an adjustment. I've played there. It is... Uh, it's different. You're not going to be gasping for air, but it does affect. Huh, it does affect your. You feel like you're not in the condition that you thought you were. You just don't get as much oxygen as quickly. So you'll see guys with the mass, the oxygen mass on, taking oxygen uh, periodically. So that ball will be in the air for a while. There's tremendous hang, st- hang time in that rarefied air. Track the football, catch the football. Who will it be? Will it be Trent Irwin? Um, Will it be Puka? Will it be Tyler Boyd? It's it's going to be interesting the decision that the decisions that they make in terms of returning punts. But they're going to have to do it, and they're going to have to do it well. And the Denver Broncos have been a little bit of Jekyll and Hyde in terms of special teams. The the, uh, punt return, they're tenth in the National Football League, uh, punting the football and covering punts. They're eighth best in the National Football League. Kickoff return, they're second worst in the National Football League. Kickoff coverage, they're dead last in the National Football League. So in the punting game, they're outstanding. In the kick return game, they're terrible. The other thing is they block three kicks. So you're going to have to be real sound in terms of blocking for your punter and blocking field goals and extra points because they get their hands on, on footballs. Three kicks is a, is a significant number. To, to, to have blocked three kicks in 13 games is real, and I'm sure Darren Simmons has addressed that this week as they prepare to go to Denver. So those are some of the keys. So those are some of the matchups that are going to be very, very interesting. In my mind, as, as always, it comes down to the line of scrimmage. It, go, it starts on the inside and work your way out. You've got to take control of the line of scrimmage. If you, uh, if you can run the football and, and control the other team's running game, you have a chance for everything else to fall into place. And I know uh, in, in the National Football League, it's not, it's not always that simple. Sometimes, depending on what they present to you as a, as a defensive front, sometimes you have to throw the football uh, to set up the running game instead of the other way around, the running game setting up the passing game. But make adjustments, be balanced offensively as best you can, and it's going to be very interesting to me. One final thought. Teams are going with a light box. They're playing two safeties deep. They're playing quarters coverage because of the Bengals three wide receivers we talked about. They're outstanding. Teams are playing coverage. They're not playing pressure and loading up the box to stop the run and to pressure the quarterback. They're playing coverage. So what do you have to do? When you only have six players, four down linemen and two linebackers in the box, You have to run them out of that. You have to be able to run the football, get your running game going, and make them sink one of those safeties into the box so you can throw the football easier. The Bengals haven't been been able to do that consistently enough. When they get a light box, when they only have six players in the box, the Bengals have to be able to have a consistent ground game. They start loading the box up. Now you can eat with your three wides. You're going to find bigger seams, bigger holes down the football field. Nobody's playing man coverage very often against the Cincinnati Bengals because of that trio of wide receivers. They're all playing soft zones. Got to be able to run the football when teams decide to play soft zone and try to take your passing game away. It's going to be a massive key in this football game as well for Joe Burrow and company. Big game, both teams seven and six, both teams in the playoff hunt. The winner 
keeps himself in very, very viable spot. The loser, whew, margin for error is nothing. You got to win out. You lose this football game, you have to win out. You have no choice. This is like a playoff game. It has to be considered a must-win playoff game atmosphere going out to Mile High Stadium and take care of the Denver Broncos. In fact, every single game remaining, they only have four games on the schedule uh, in December and January. Every single one of them, you have to treat like it's a must-win and uh, playoff atmosphere, no doubt about it. In my opinion, have to win three out of the four. They have four games remaining. They put themselves in a spot where they have to win three of them. And two of them better be the division games. They beat Baltimore, beat Cleveland. You go five and one in the division, and you win 10 games overall, you're going to win the tiebreaker. You'll win the division. If you don't, now all of a sudden, you're leaning on somebody else for help. Now every week it's like, oh, so-and-so has to beat so-and-so, or, or we, don't even, we don't have a shot. Control your own destiny. Win three out of four. I think Kansas City is going to be a tough, a tough, uh, tough task. They're playing pretty well now, and they've got Mahomes, and they've been to the Super Bowl. That's a good football team. But if you can win the other three, the two division contests, Baltimore at Paul Brown Stadium in Cleveland up on the lake to finish the season, that game could be very interesting. But you have to beat the Denver Broncos first. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah, know, you, know, you got to get that body right. That's so. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.